At this point in 1980, Carter was ahead of Reagan. At this point in 1992, Clinton was at 29%. At this point in 2004, Kerry led Bush by 5%. Even in 2012, Obama was losing to Mitt Romney until the very last few months of the election. The 2024 election may not be the slam dunk that we all thought it was going to be about a year ago. The election is now roughly five months out and people are becoming increasingly worried that President Biden may not be able to beat Donald Trump as easily as he did in 2020. This growing concern is due to polling not really changing even as Donald Trump goes through a criminal trial, even as President Biden gives these amazing speeches at college campuses or even at the State of the Union. But there are a few reasons we should remain optimistic heading into November and I want to go over those today. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but President Biden can and will win re-election if we do everything right. I was reading a political thread titled, What Does Biden Have Going For Him in November? And this was written by a concerned Biden supporter who points out, I'm going to be honest, of the latest polling results, opinion pieces, and another post on here showing how many critical districts were trending towards the GOP was making me quite hopeless. Biden has done so much to reduce inflation, increase manufacturing jobs, improve health care, etc., yet none of that seems to shift the needle at all. Trump literally supports an insurrection in nobody cares, nor do they care about the sheer number of indictments he's facing. So this person asks, what does Biden have going for him? And I want to go over some of this good data we have that we can focus on so we stop spending all day worrying. One of the top replies says, there's a lot of reasons to think the fundamentals favor Biden and why to not focus on the noise of the polls. I think the election is a toss up, but I genuinely think Biden will win. Here's my thinking. Let's start with the fact that presidential polling is not and never has been predictive this far away from the election. At this point in 1980, Carter was a Ahead of Reagan. At this point in 1992, Clinton was at 29%. At this point in 2004, Kerry led Bush by 5%. Even in 2012, Obama was losing to Mitt Romney until the very last few months of the election. People will come back and say, but people know both these candidates already, so that argument doesn't work. And I'll say people knew Trump and Hillary in 2016 too, and the polling was messed up then as well. His second reason is horse race presidential polling averages are misleading. Not all polls are created equal, so lumping them together like that creates an inaccurate picture. I don't really think Nate Silver and the 538 people are all that great at their jobs when they have to publish a piece justifying their 2022 polling when it was clearly misleading. Remember, in 2022, we were expecting a massive red wave, but that never came. In fact, Democrats blew Republicans out of the water in most competitive races. How many elections do we need to see wrong polls of before we agree to stop paying attention? Number three is people will say Biden is doing poorly because of a bad economy, but what bad economy? According to polling, most folks seem to feel good or fine about their private situation. He points to a recent poll showing Americans are actually pretty happy with their finances, Americans overall have a surprising degree of satisfaction with their economic situation, according to findings from the Axios Vibe survey by the Harris Poll. By the numbers, 63% of Americans rate their current financial situation as being good, including 19% of us who say it's very good, and neither number is particularly low. They're both entirely in line with the average result the past 20 times Harris Poll has asked this question. So despite people saying the economy economy is tanking or there is a recession, most Americans are actually incredibly happy with how their personal financial situation is going. The person on the political thread then points out wage growth has consistently outpaced overall CPI. And that is perfect. That is exactly what we need. That means real wage growth is outpacing the growth of inflation in America and people's paychecks are not only keeping up with inflation, but they are beating inflation. And listen, inflation sucks for everybody. Nobody likes seeing things get more expensive when they go to the grocery store, but as long as wage growth is outpacing the growth of inflation, that means Bidenomics is working, the Biden administration is winning and helping American citizens. The person continues, I'm not going to sit here and pretend a lot of people aren't struggling with the initial price increases when 9% inflation first hit. That's what I was just saying. But the recovery has been ample and undeniable, and most people are doing relatively fine. Everyone who wants a job has one. Frankly, we aren't in a recession and aren't going to be given how strong the current quarter has been. 
I don't think nostalgia for lower prices and bad vibes are enough to move an election. They never have before. Only real recessions decide elections. The next reason he gives are people will say the wars and global chaos move the needle to Trump. America is not at war. We are not sending men to die. Those problems are oceans away and do not affect us. These wars, like all wars America isn't a belligerent in, will not affect the election. To build on that point, when you poll Americans about what they're worried about in this upcoming election, foreign policy tends to be the last on that list. It's very easy on social media when we see the extremes being boosted to the front page to think that all Americans think that Joe Biden is a warmongering president, but that's not the case. Most Americans aren't paying attention to our foreign affairs. Number five is people say that immigration will sink Biden. First of all, immigration isn't really a big deal to people who aren't conservatives, very true, and it really doesn't affect most people's lives. Immigration does not decide elections. Number six, people will say that the rise in crime will sink Biden, but what's rise in crime? He links to an NBC article saying the U.S. crime rate is still dropping, FBI data shows. New FBI data confirms previous indications that crime in the U.S. declined significantly in 2023, continuing a post-pandemic trend and belying widespread perceptions that crime is rising. He then said, if you want more proof, look into the work of Alan Lichtman. He successfully predicted every election since 1984 and currently favors Biden. I'm just echoing his arguments. So this person does provide some rock solid advantages that Biden has heading into November. To build on top of that, somebody else in this thread said, a funding advantage, abortion as an issue, incumbency, performing better with likely voters versus Trump performing better with unlikely voters, and low expectations. People literally think Biden is a husk, so when he does okay in debates and televised events, it's a real boost for him. Somebody added on to that saying, what I've been hearing is that Biden and Dems already have a very extensive local network of political organizing and campaign management set up. Think door knocking, commercials, and the like. The Republicans have been running a much slimmer organization since they don't have the money. Even if they're catching up on funding, they're not getting that time back. President Biden and his campaign have already reserved a massive amount of fall advertisement slots, and those slots will only get more and more expensive as we move closer to that time, meaning the Trump campaign will have to pay more for the same exact advertising slots. Another comment on this thread, building on the idea that Biden is running a strong campaign, says, number one, his opponent. If the GOP candidate were somebody who didn't have all of Trump's baggage, they'd be up by double digits. That is probably true. If Nikki Haley were going against Joe Biden, I think Nikki Haley would have a much better chance than Donald Trump. If there are televised debates, they are also likely to demonstrate, firstly, how much more coherent and with it Biden is than the GOP caricature of him as a drooling vegetable suggests, and secondly, how much crazier Trump has gotten in the last four years. Number two, abortion. This issue is an anchor for the GOP and is going to hurt Trump, not to mention they keep doubling down on this abortion issue. Number three, money. Biden's campaign has far more resources and isn't pissing them away on paying the candidates legal fees the way Trump's is, so it is likely to have more success translating poll support into actual votes. This is doubly important since high propensity voters have shifted leftward since Trump came along and the Democrats can concentrate their resources on getting more marginal voters to the polls without worrying about much of their base. There's still reason to be concerned for sure, but it's not the case that Biden has nothing going for him. And somebody built on that argument by replying, just to add to your first point, not enough noise is made about the people who Trump has alienated away from the GOP. I'm from Michigan, and if you were to look back at the 2020 election map, you would likely miss something unless you kept track of our election patterns. That missing info is that Kent County, Grand Rapids, went blue. The second largest city in the state and the fourth largest county had not voted for the Democratic Party since Obama in 2008, and even then, it was barely squeaked out. Trump lost 30% of the Republican primary there this year as well, among the highest in the state. Trump has successfully alienated a big chunk of white, middle-class, and educated voters. This is also the home to former Republican Peter 
Meyer who voted to impeach him. Somebody further built on their argument by responding, even if 1% of the GOP voter base decided to not vote for Trump, he likely lost the election. Remember, margins for swing states are super thin. Biden won Georgia by a mere 11,000 votes. Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016 by like 40,000 votes. If only 1% of the GOP voter base views Trump so badly they can't vote, he basically loses. So I hope this video leaves you a little bit more optimistic about President Biden's chances of beating Donald Trump in the 2024 election. If it does, make sure you leave a like, comment a blue heart, hit that subscribe button, and have a great day.